Welcome to uh, week one. We're officially here, everybody. College football is finally, finally really getting its feet wet. You know, let, you know, this past weekend, we, we, got, we got a couple games. We got a couple games. You know, SMU came back to beat Nevada. Florida State, you know, stumbled against Haynes King of all people at Georgia Tech in Ireland with DJ Alphabet, you know, being unable to throw a pass more than 10 yards for a majority of that game. And what he did, they were overthrown balls. So, yeah. And also Montana State did, in fact, beat New Mexico. I know, right? I know. But, yeah. Not the appetizers are out the way, you know, Hawaii test, everything like that, you know, some FCS games in there. Now the real fun begins with week one, and this is going to be very intriguing. Um, I, wanna, I, I don't know where to begin because there's a lot to talk about. Florida State, of course, is going to have to try to bounce back. They're going to play Monday night against Boston College against Thomas Castellanos. And it's and Bill O'Brien, Bill O'Brien, that Bill O'Brien. I know, right? But at the same time, I mean, it's just like this Boston College team, you know, it, it, they got a lot of stuff back. There's a lot of things, you know, working there. And Florida State is reeling. But can Florida State gel it together? And that was the big question I asked at the beginning of the season, you know, a couple weeks ago. Can Florida State get it all together? And we're going to find out if they can. You know, um, the spread right now as it stands is Florida State by 17 and a half. So um, I don't know how good that will be because they said, you know, Florida State by like 12 and some change, you know, against Georgia Tech. And we saw how that worked out. They lost by three. Um, the, the worst case scenario for Florida State is they start 0-2 not only in ACC play, by 0-2 in the race for the college football playoff. And, you know, two losses is already cutting it as it is, you know. So, um, yeah, so there's a lot to go around here. A lot, of, a lot of things, you know, are going to hinge on this game. So Florida State has to get it together and win this one. Um, for teams like Texas and Michigan, all they have to do is, you know, all they have to do is just win their first game and get through the first week, and then the real meet begins because Texas and Michigan face off week two. Uh, Michigan, you know, with a new quarterback, with all sorts of NCAA sanctions coming against them, you know, probably having to, you know, lose, you know, lose their head coach more for like the entire season. Alex Orgy's inexperienced. Um, again, the sanctions have been kind of big, been kind of a big distraction. But you know, Michigan still has to play, and it's against Fresno State, which again, that spread right there is twenty-one and a half as of right now. But I don't know how that's going to change because you know things did change. You know, when I was talking about the spreads of last week's games and everything like that, Fresno State ain't no pushover. So we'll see how that goes um, with the Michigan game. Penn State, West Virginia. Now, this line is barely eight and a half in Penn State's favor. Garrett Green is back for the Mountaineers. And, you know, for West Virginia, they got something solid. You know, a lot of people are picking, you know, West Virginia to, you know, win this game against Penn State. They think they could get Penn State off guard. But um, James Franklin's team, you know, is still – Still trying to get, still, still trying to, you know, get that that easy ten wins and, and your end type scenario, scenario. I think that's what Penn State is aiming for: ten wins. You're in, you know, at the very least. Um, I'm not sure what in the world Penn State's got at wide receiver though. Does anybody know? Do you know? I don't know. Drowler's still the quarterback, so I don't really expect too much from the Nittany Lions, but I do expect a pretty interesting one to open up the Saturday slate. That'll be one of the noon games at kickoff again. The teams like Alabama playing, you know, not great competition in Western Kentucky, but um, 
I don't know what in the world Kalen DeBoer is going to, you know, put out there for that first game, but we've seen what he can do in hell. Yeah, that Washington team last year was just just magical. So, you know, Alabama, if things go the way they should go, they should take care of business before they get started on their, you know, big time track of games. Now, Miami Miami is a team that a lot of people are pretty high on. I don't know why people are high on them, but at the same time, will the ACC even have a team that's worthy at the end of the season? Because Florida State already faltered. So what if Miami loses to Florida, who has the tough, who is probably the toughest schedule in the country, if not the toughest? So I'm not sure. I'm not sure here, man. I'm not sure. So let me tell you, Miami's got a talented roster. Miami's got all this stuff. They got all they got all this stuff that they've touting up. They're, they're showing up. But again, there's just there's just that one thing. And it's Florida, it's that Florida, it's that Florida something. It's something that Florida water that's telling me that you know Miami isn't really that team. But watch me eat my words at some point. I'm probably gonna eat my words by saying that. And again, this this is gonna be an interesting matchup. It's going to be one of those games, you know, in the, you know, early afternoon. So it's probably going to be the only game in the early afternoon after you get your fill of Georgia, Clemson, and Penn State, West Virginia. Um, definitely check out that Miami-Florida game. It's going to be an intriguing one, to say the least. And then the late cap game on Saturday night, Riley Leonard and the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. I know, right? I know. It's interesting. Um not sure i'm not sure what to make of this game is this game going to even be that good i'm not sure a and m you know a lot of people you know are kind of thinking like a and m you know maybe can get can do some damage this year mike elko's the new head coach down in aggie land and i'm not sure you know if if things are going to be the way they should be for a and m you know on a, a successful season let's get them into the cfp I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Riley Leonard was decimated by injuries last year at various points. Of course, you know, Notre Dame has has always had, you know, for the past, like, maybe decade, they've had a really good defense. Um, A lot of people are picking A&M to win this game against Notre Dame, and I I think that they can, I think they can, but I'm just not sure. I just, I just, I still have questions, you know, Mike Elko's a good coach, but he's not a great coach. And to be great, you have to overcome everything. You know, yeah, I get it. I get it. You know, there's the whole Elko Leonard connection and stuff like that because of Duke and everything. But at the same time, Notre Dame is a, a a team that yeah, they're ranked number seven for a pretty for a pretty good reason. This is a team that definitely can make it far. I know people, you know, well Notre Dame's overrated. But you have to understand, defense wins championships, and I love defense, and I think this is going to be a defensive slugfest. I don't think these teams will even score 30 points. You know, one of, one of them's not going to score 30, and probably both of them aren't. And I think this game is going to be a real slow grinder, really a bit of a meat grinder type game, you know? And then Clemson, Georgia. Yeah, Cade Klubnik is the quarterback for Clemson. Um I'm not sure, you know, what in the world we're going to see here with the Clemson Tigers against Carson Beck, who a lot of people are saying is the number one overall pick for next year, which is insane. Like, this is what this is my problem. You know, the NFL draft, you know, my problem with the NFL draft is is we're taking quarterbacks. We don't really need to be taken, you know, in the first time. Like, trying to, even though, you know, there's some diamonds. There's some diamonds in the rough. There, there's going to be a lot of rough stuff. Try to develop the quarterbacks that we have first. Like we don't need to be drafted five quarterbacks in the first round. And this is another example that I just don't see Carson Beck as that type of guy. But watch me, watch, watch me get proven wrong. You know, Brock Bowers is gone, um, but Georgia's still Georgia. They, they are like Alabama now. They're pumping up guys. You know, you know that are big, strong, fast, and athletic. In waves, in waves, and we're talking like 50 new ones for the last 50 that left. 
So that that's what Georgia is right now, and that's why they're the number one team in the country. That's why a lot of people are picking them to win the national championship. I did not. I picked Oregon. I know, um, but yeah, this Georgia team is really, really good. Will Will Clemson make this a game? I'm not sure. I don't. I don't. I don't know. Um, LSU USC is going to be down in Vegas. Uh, Garrett Nussmeyer is the quarterback for LSU. Lincoln Riley trying to, you know, do something, you know, do something, you know, with a new guy. He's going to have a new guy. at the helm. I'm not sure what his name is. I forgot off the top of my head, but it's not Caleb Williams. I'll tell you that much. He's in the NFL. Um, this USC team, you know, they're trying to say, oh, well, they've, they've got a better defense this year. I'm here to tell you is – do they really? We'll see. We'll find out. But I'm I'm not real again. I'm not too sold on either of these two teams. I do think there could be some breakaway potential, but I'm not sold on either LSU or USC. I just don't buy, you know, Garrett Westmeyer. I just don't buy Lincoln Riley. You know, now, you know, when as compared to like five years ago, like five years ago, I would have been like. Lincoln Riley is great, you know, the split, you know, the split wide, you know, stuff, the, the two-back system with the air raid and everything like that, and the dynamic attacks with all these quarterbacks that he's been putting in the NFL and stuff like that. I think all that's great. But you can put you can only put so many quarterbacks in the NFL and still not win enough. And I, I just don't see it in a tough, tough Big Ten, you know, USC is going to have a tough, tough year. Yeah, they might avoid some teams, but at the same time, it's going to be a tough Big Ten slate. And it's going to be a tough game against LSU. So, you know, I wonder. I really do wonder. And then for other teams like Colorado, is the hype real? Is Shadur Sanders, is Neon Dion, are, are they real? Yeah. Um, Dion is getting into a little bit of trouble for, you know, trying to, you know, basically take reporters, you know, and then kick them out, you know, basically trying to get reporters removed from trying to do their job, which is insane to me, but whatever. Um, the G5, I don't know who the rep will be. Uh, again, I threw a random, you know, wild card of Boise State out there, but again, it could be teams like Liberty, it could be teams like App State. You know, there's all sorts of different teams in the group of five that could get that bid. A lot of teams are playing, you know, FCS teams. It's like it's like 50 plus games, nearly 60 in week one against FCS teams, which I mean, that's OK. But I mean, it kind of waters down some of these matchups a little bit. Kind of makes me, you know, want to you know, try and watch something else. But hey. We got a pretty good. We got a pretty interesting Saturday on the cards here. You know, we got a pretty interesting Saturday, a, a decent Sunday game, and a Monday night game that has a, a pretty intriguing storyline already. So, um, of course, like I said, my thoughts on some of these, you know, my thoughts on some of these other things in college football, you know, are kind of mixed. You know, right now, like the two minute warning, I'm mixed on that. I don't think that should really be a thing, but, you know, got to feel a more airtime somehow. Um, you know, ESPN kind of shifting things around and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm kind of mixed on that, but all right. It, it, uh, it, they're, they're the world wide leader in sports for a reason. I, I'm, not, I'm not entirely happy with them, but, you know, they, they do what they need to do. I mean, what can I say? So, yeah, that's basically it for me. Um, college football is here. College football is finally here. The fun gets started on Thursday. Um, if you want to watch Minnesota, North Carolina, you can, but I, I, I'm not going to. If you want to watch Temple, Oklahoma on Friday, which I will, um, that should be intriguing. And then the Saturday slate, the Sunday game, there's, there's a couple more, but those involve FCS teams. And then, and of course, Monday night to wrap up your Labor Day weekend. So that's going to be all for me. I'll see you all next week with more college football. So enjoy the games this week, and let's have a fun time with it.